Welcome back. What we're going to do today is um, approach a rigorous uh, derivation of linearized elasticity from our existing uh, equations and constitutive relations for uh, full-fledged nonlinear elasticity. Okay? The topic of this segment and the next one, perhaps, is uh, Okay, uh, we'll approach this uh, systematically, uh, and we are going to do this by revisiting kinematics followed by constitutive relations first. Okay. And it's only then that we will go to the to the balance law, which is essentially balance of linear momentum. Okay, so in comparison with the way we developed the material for continuum mechanics, we're going to switch the order of uh, constitutive relations and balance of linear momentum, right? just, just for didactic purposes. Okay, so let's plunge into it. Um, so the whole business with linearized elasticity is um, that we are looking at the, at, at what happens with the, uh, the full-fledged equations of nonlinear elasticity when the sort of situation we have with the body is the following. So we have, as always, that. We have the axes, right? We have the bases. We have the reference configuration, right? The this is the configuration the body occupies in its reference state. Okay, that's a material point, the placement of a, of a material point. And, um, when it comes to the deformations, right, we are looking at uh, really small deformations, okay? So um, in order to represent that well, let me suppose that uh, this is the, uh, this is the, the Dirichlet boundary, the Dirichlet boundary, okay? And let's suppose furthermore that just, just for the purposes of argument, this is not essential, but let's just suppose that u equals zero here, okay? Okay, this, I'm, this, I'm, I'm doing this just so that it gets easy to show what I want to show. If this is the situation, what we are trying to say in the con uh, when, when we're talking about linearized elasticity is that, uh, of course, that subset, uh, that boundary subset is fixed because we've specified that the displacement goes to zero there. And then, the deformation over is such that over the rest of the body, we have uh, what you may call somewhat colloquially, uh, without being very precise, we may call small deformations, right? So maybe we have something like that. Okay? So the body is, uh, is undergoing small deformations, and we need to say what, what we mean by this. Okay? So really, this is omega t now. Okay, so the, the idea here is that um, deformations are small in some sense. Okay, and we what we have to do first of all in the context of kinematics is make this precise. Okay, so let's let's start with kinematics then. Okay, so as always, we have the deformation gradient f, right, which is partial of phi with respect to x, right, and we know that this is 
this, right? Okay, and, and just to make things clear, what we are seeing here is that this little vector is u. Okay, so that field right that's our u field okay all right so what we mean by saying that the deformations are small is that if we construct the euclidean norm or really any other norm that we would care to compute of the displacement gradient okay it is really very much less than 1 okay so this is what we mean also by, um, well, this is essentially what we mean by saying that the deformations are small, okay? So, so really what we're saying is that the displacement gradients the displacement gradient is small, all right? What consequences does this have? If we consider the Lagrange strain, okay, right? If you go ahead and compute this and recall that this is uh, F transpose is and that's F minus the isotropic tensor, okay? If we go ahead and work this out, what we have um, is that we have that, we have, a we have the linear terms, right? Right? And then we have the quadratic term in displacement gradients. Okay? Now, because we have this condition, right, and uh, the Lagrange strain as written is, uh, it consists of terms that are of order 1 and 2 in the displacement gradient, right? First and second order terms in the displacement gradient. If the Euclidean norm of the displacement gradient and really any other norm that we care to compute uh, is small, right? By which we mean very much less than 1 as circled at the top of the slide. What this means is that relative to the first order terms, the second order terms are really much smaller, okay? So what we're, what we're going to say is that uh, these are really, well, no, that's not rigorous. What we're saying is that these terms are even smaller, definitely they're smaller than one, but they're really even smaller than um, um, the norm of those terms are even smaller than the norm of uh, the displacement gradient, okay? So in comparison for the with the first order terms, it's all right to neglect them, okay? Right, so neglect, all right? And that then leads us to what we call the infinitesimal strain, right?
right? And this you know very well. We've used it a few times in this uh, series of lectures. It's epsilon denoted as epsilon, and it is partial of u with respect to x and its symmetrizing part. Okay, and that is the strain that is um, that has been familiar to you since before this series of lectures. And the idea is that when you are doing linearized elasticity, you are working with the infinitesimal strain, which is this object. Okay, observe that it is linear in the displacement gradient, right? Epsilon is linear in Okay, right? Whereas the Lagrange strain is quadratic. Now, remember, we are going to we are going to look at what we are going to develop things with this. But remember, you should always have at the back of your mind: is this strain rotationally invariant? No, right? We showed that many many units ago. Right? We demonstrated that this this strain still contains rotational components. Okay. Um, Okay. All right. So remember, so it's so so we know that 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 leads to problems if we are not careful about keeping the strains very small. Okay. So that's just 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 a caveat. All right. Okay. So so this this is what happens with the kinematics. Okay. This is really all we need to know about the kinematics. 